emotions all uh, can you please mr castle give light in regards to that uh, the program ends in september yeah the, the, until september there wouldn't have been any any motion that is led by a member that we debate okay honorable Ghana. thank you very much madam speaker i uh, want to propose that maybe the the first the first session on 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 the 27th will factor in uh, member statements if if there will not be legislation uh, we factor in member statements and made and 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 motions without notice uh, so because we'll be coming back from the constituency period uh, i think it makes sense that uh, the first sitting some of the issues that will have uh, picked up uh, members might uh, would, might want to raise them uh, and not wait for the se second week uh, that's my proposal madam speaker okay i don't see any hand Mr. Plasso, those are the well questions as well as proposals on the program. No, thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, I think the twenty seventh, the proposal by Honorable Ghana will then enable what Honorable Lozi is asking for, because we must first have the motions uh, submitted by honourable members before there can be a debate on them. So that session will then assist honourable members to propose motions uh, that can then be scheduled. For debate by the house okay honorable members there is the program the responses have been given do we adopt i don't know what the hand means agreed i move for the adoption okay any seconder seconded by honorable Sonny. Honourable members, while we appreciate that today may be the last day, I will just request that members of the Joint Standing Committee be on standby um, between today and the 29th. We will try and see if we can have a virtual meeting, the Joint Rules Committee, rather. That uh, meeting is important so that we can set up uh, the structures uh, that... Uh, of a joint committee nature. So we will do that though by, um, you know, virtual. It's, I'm saying this because uh, Mr. Klaus said today is the last day. <laughs> so while physically it may be the last day here, but actually our constituency period starts on the 29th. So between then, I was just asking members to um be ready that we can convene an online meeting on the joint rules so that we deal with the constitution of those committees honorable Dawson. no thanks speaker the the final matter of concern is a uh, acceleration uh, yeah on the rules committee's resolution to establish the portfolio committee on the presidency uh, I'm, I want to impress on the speaker to fast track that process. The Honorable Mamfundis is dragging. There is no Mamfundis. What are we No, speaker, I don't think you are away. <laughs> Can we get the report on interpretation services? Madam yeah, Speaker, I will give that report. We've set you, well, it's going to be on the screen, but we'll circulate the presentation as well. Um, we first wish to state, perhaps the obvious, that um, we render interpret interpreting services in 12 official languages, um, and therefore we are compliant with the, with the Constitution to that extent, and that we have a language services, which was established in 2004, which has three units, interpreting, translations, and reporting. So what we have when we do, when we're sitting, it's the interpreting service. Uh, reporting is a hansard service. And of course, the translations. And um, we do interpret 
when we go to taking parliament to the people, sectoral parliaments, and of course in the plenaries. And for committees, we do it on request. So when there's a request, we 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 make that service available. The next slide. Um, so when there is a need, for instance, for Khoi, Nama, and Sen languages, we outsource that uh, service so that we can make the service available. But it's a special arrangement that would be made. We also want to indicate that there's been uh, a, a greater demand for interpreting services in the recent past or in recent years. And we always provide at least two interpreters per language, per session. And that is our minimum uh, requirement. Currently, in terms of capacity, we have 27 uh, language practitioners. This excludes your seniors and 26 uh, reporters in the reporting unit and 30 in the translations unit. So you have 83. So the next table indicates um, the vacancies that we have, but also what we are doing about the vacancies. One of the members will may may indicate may note note that under Isindabele there is a field positions uh, zero there, but we do. Yeah, I think the point that I've just made that interpreting services were provided in all venues in the mini plenaries. At least one interpreter per language was provided in each session, and uh, we also have indicated uh, outsourced the service. The Secretary of the Parliament may wish to say something on the issue. Thank you. Let's allow the Secretary to add, and then I'll open it up. No, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Good morning, honorable members. Indeed, we are prioritizing the areas where we have vacancies, and that matter will be updated to the Programming Committee um, as soon as we have a substantive update as to when will we be gradually feeling those? But it is a matter that is receiving utmost attention to be expedited. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Mbango. Hi, my dear Garland, as close as I've seen it, don't get well up. Speak. I find back on. Speaker, the issue for me is firstly, in the front of the hands at Lena, he said, corner, because in the past, you used to be sent a record of your speech to correct to check whether you'd been recorded accurately. Since the Parliament had have never received any speech summary, it says nobody's corner now on record or what. And now when the party at some point saying wants to refer to some of the positions we've taken here, we might not, it might not have that information at hand. The other issue for me is is there any some kind of quality assurance the Parliament ends when it outsources the service? Because sometimes you listen to that interpretation of Mumbai I sang an inalendite to as a speaker on the podium. Upelus ba lost, ubona bandu understand the language, especially when it's tran translated to vernacular. Ubonu kutabanya baya understand that, but when are you actually lost after having listened to the interpretation services? And also, I, I want to understand when it comes to, remember we spoke, what is the purpose of the language services unit here? if the papers of parliament cannot be translated to different languages, what do they sit and do? Because often in the past, what we saw were other papers and other documents that were only purely in English and Africans, as if those are the only languages we speak here. And so this was Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I, I think Honorable... Uh, Member of for, for, for next to my friend, next to me, I've covered. My, my, my concern, Honorable Chairperson, is the capacity of the interpreters. interpreters. I was listening yesterday when they interpret from English, from, from Africans to Isi Zulu. I, a, a capacity icon is not that if they can if you can check honorable uh, speaker uh thank thanks speaker now i'm i'm contempt with your proposal speaker but also on another aspect that we must not lose the pulse on it's the the support in the 
the committees itself, contact advisors and so forth, because there are some committees that will um, that used to be combined that are now separately. Like I know, like yesterday, what we faced in the minerals and electricity, they are now separate. So there's no content advisor for electricity currently. So that we also need to keep our eyes on the ball that um, in those portfolio committees, members do have those type of support within the committees as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but to the rest of the members, uh, also issues of quality have been raised. We would like to respond to those issues. Um, and and of course, the deputy speaker, speaker has assigned the deputy speaker language policy issues. We'll also... In that... Can, since Can it... we get an undertaking that when we come back, yeah. the dome will be ready? Uh, from the secretary. Because we want to, like, I don't, when we come back, it's plenary. So so it must be ready, the dome, even with that thing to vote, so that we, it must replicate parliament as much as possible. There is no question about the uh, going the dome option. There's no one who's doubting that. And like, uh, we all have agreed in that. The issue that we're raising was that when we come back from recess, it must be in place and then it must have all the parliament functions and the setup must be like appears like a parliament. That let's let's stop the city hall, let's stop city ICC, let's stop all these other temporary arrangements. Let's have something which will be much more solid. I, I will give you a full go ahead in terms of that. It's even much more convenient that the dome is owned by the state. So it, it's not going to be hired uh, for a, a longer period. So let's just make sure that by the time we come back from recess, it's fully established. That is the point that we're raising. That is why we're saying that we had wanted to raise it in a, the program discussion. So that is the emphasis that we're putting that. So that the, we fully, fully agree on the dome option. So let's proceed accordingly. Thank you. Honorable Nkwankwa. Speaker, perhaps to use a paradox, we want to plead for more haste and less speed. Why am I saying that? Is that in the meeting we held yesterday, we said we're still going to go back and do a comparative cost analysis. Does it mean we're opposed to the dome? It means it must make financial sense for parliament to do so. Because once the decision, it doesn't stop that Submission doesn't stop the processes which are currently underway, the consultation you have done. But remember, there's a context as well to the debate speaker uh, to this issue, simply because you raised it in your debate as well. Some of the initiatives that government is undertaking to address the issue of office space, accommodation, and all of these issues. But we have to have this comparative analysis so that we know all the hidden costs Land of is when an up game. It must be partitioned. All of those things must happen. How much is that going to cost? The cost might not, Parliament might not necessarily be the cost center for some of the expenses that the taxpayer is going to incur. It might be defense, as you said, but this, those are costs to the taxpayer nonetheless. And in the meeting we had yesterday with uh, when we we're concluding it, there was a commitment that such a discussion, even if it happens virtually, to make sure that by the time we come back, there's certainty about the way forward. If it's the dope, it's fine. If it makes financial sense, it's fine. But everyone must be brought on board because it's a decision that as this collective, we're going to have to go and defend outside once we've taken it. Once we choose an option, because now if you have a marquee speaker as well, it becomes another option. And we don't even know how much it costs Parliament to actually put that marquee there. And we need to get a sense, a better sense of what are the cost implications of each option that we're going to undertake. The other issue here, Speaker, which is important, is there is a, the refurbishment of Parliament. I hear that there was a presentation given by the Secretary to Parliament and other people. I was not part of that meeting because communication was sent to a wrong email address. That's fine. But the deadlines now seem to have changed from the initial deadlines which were given to us in the sixth parliament. And we need to interrogate that and ask questions to DBSA as well. So we need to look at this thing more comprehensively, 
Not to say we are opposed to proposals that are on the table. Thank you. For the report that we were sent, I read that report with, sub, with committee meeting rooms, a gallery that we wanted a 700-seat gallery that could only provide a 350-seat gallery. And then you've said now it's just going to be just this basic format of parliament like the ICC, like the Cape Town City Hall, like the Marquee. So sometimes we can't be in two places at the same time, some of us. Maybe some of us are more like the Holy Ghost and can be, but I can't. So when I missed that meeting yesterday, I wanted the opportunity to raise this issue here today, that we make informed decisions. And the only properly informed decision I can make is when I see two options that are costed in front of my eyes. And until I see two options or three options that are costed in front of my eyes, I cannot make an informed decision. And I'm here to make informed decisions, not to... Welcome to RT Celeb Times. That's it for now, guys. And thank you so much for watching this video. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more.